Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bash Cast. I'm Hunter. I'm, I'm Jeff. I'm Quaid. I'm Jacob. And we got some really <laughs> exciting stuff to talk about with you guys today. Starting off with a trailer that just dropped today that is extremely exciting, Star Wars Rogue One. So, I don't know about you guys, it's pretty great. Yeah. It was I impressive. liked it a lot. Um, Death Star, Stormtroopers, classic Star Wars. Yeah, and it was really, it was, it's, it was very interesting because we saw a lot of things in this trailer that we couldn't see in Episode 7 because we're going back bef after the prequels before Episode 4, is yeah, that right? Yeah, right before so Episode 4, actually. We're, we're seeing a lot of in interesting things. We see Imperial Guards, we see different classes of Stormtroopers. Maybe Darth Vader. Maybe Darth Vader. Maybe. <laughs> there, there was a shot where uh, there's a black caped uh, person walking to the center of the room with yeah. two real guards on the side. Yep. So it makes you wonder who who's the caped man? Is it is it the Emperor? I wonder It's could, the pod it could racing be champion. A whole new character also. It, yeah, it could be. Thing. Um well there was also a scene that really had me interested was there was like this kind of kung fu master guy. Yeah. Which yeah, is I saw like, him. Is he part of the extended universe? Yeah, I just don't the know. About. Crap out of that stormtrooper with I, a stick. So this, my prediction for the movie is that they're gonna recruit this this smuggler. Let's say, let's call her a smuggler. Yeah. Okay. And she's gonna get this ragtag group of different people from all around the galaxy. They could come. also be part of the rebellion, though. Yeah, that's true. But the thing that got me was there's a scene where I think. It might be a bounty hunter. He has he has hair like down to his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. he has like his like with the dreadlocks. Yeah, he has yeah. like he has like orange orangish armor on, mm -hmm. and uh, he has like a some kind of like a rifle blaster type of thing. Yeah, and he's running towards ATAT. -AT, is that right? Is yeah, that... there's a whole group of them just which running towards ATATs. Pretty, <laughs> pretty sweet. Which the rebels definitely did not do that in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, man, what, there's so much in this trailer. I mean, it's so hard to quantify I, everything that's going on. They're really. super, I don't know, cryptic with their trailers. They were like that with The Force Awakens, and they only released little bits. You didn't really know what was going on. Which is totally cool with me, because I yeah. know, the, the less I know, the better. Okay, well, so hey, listen, you guys. I'm always here. I'm always ready to put a little contrast in this. I got to say, no pod racing. No, no, I'm, no view. <laughs> This isn't okay. It's kind of a prequel, but it's not exactly. It's, so it should be. It's gonna, okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a better prequel than the prequels. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I agree. That, that is my. Uh, what got me th was thinking right now. that the main character, I think it was the girl that they were talking to throughout the trailer. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, she was dressed up in a Imperial pilot's mm -hmm. uniform. That was interesting. Um, which kind of confused me. I think she's gonna double cross the rebellion at could, some point. It could be that, or I, I wonder if she's some kind of like, like a, some kind of Poe character. Where she's like a pilot, maybe. Mm. But then, I, she probably is. And after watching this trailer, I could be completely wrong here. But when I went back and watched Episode Seven again, because it's on the DVD now, thankfully, uh, there at the very beginning, Poe meets with a character they say is an old ally of the uh, Resistance or the Rebel, the Republic or the Rebellion. I don't even. I don't remember this. He, he gives him a pe the piece of the map. Okay. Oh, yeah. Was, oh, oh yeah. Oh so yeah. That guy. Out in the little yeah. desert. Yeah. In, on Jakku. So I, I think it was Jakku. Yeah. Yeah. It, Jakku. So I wonder if he's a character from Rogue One. He might be. That could be very possible. It's a possibility. Tying into characters. Because he, his age would probably probably be the right age of when Rogue One is going to be taking place. Is, would that, is that right? Because it's well, before episode four. Return of the Jedi takes place 30 years before The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. So okay. he would have had to be maybe 20 20s, something? 20 something in his. Okay. In Rogue One, at least. Right. Well, I, that's, my, that's my prediction. That's my Whoa, wait, who's that. directing it? Uh, Gareth Edwards is actually directing it. It's a, what other movies did huh. he do? Um, he's done films like uh, the new Godzilla reboot that he did. He, I didn't even watch that. <laughs> I'll say the Godzilla reboot. He's done that. He also did an independent film called uh, I can't remember. I think it was called Monster. 
It's called Monster. It was like an independent British science fiction fantasy film. Mm -hmm. It's based but, on the Skillet band? Well, band Skillet. I wouldn't say that, but, <laughs> no. but his main thing right now is is uh, Godzilla. It's kind of like a, you know, I once uh, read an, an interesting comment that was used in comparison to him. It's it, the Godzilla you're talking about is the one with Brian Cranston. Like yes, yes, that, that, yes. That, yes. Okay. That, not um, the one with Matthew Broderick. I'm talking about the Brian Cranston. Okay. I, maybe... Okay, I trust it because it's, it's the same director. It's not the same uh, marketer. Because the marketing for Godzilla, from what I remember, was pretty... Sh it was a little shady because it was promising you things that it wouldn't deliver on. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. it wasn't that director though, so I'm I'm hoping that. So you're saying that you think this, that I'm hoping that this advertisement is gonna it's gonna live up to whatever this advertisement's showing see, off. See, I didn't see God's the new Godzilla. Mm -hmm. It didn't really interest me because I just I don't know. It just didn't really interest me. I'm like really Godzilla is awesome. People. Yeah, but, I love Godzilla. But like, but like, let's just leave it alone for a little bit, you know. Yeah. So in <laughs> the. The Godzilla movie that came before that was the one with uh, Matthew Broderick. Yeah, and it was bad. Was that the it one where they had like the eggs and the baby yeah. Godzilla? Yeah, I, he's like I enjoyed that movie when I was little. I haven't watched it since, but I enjoyed it then. Well, and, he was making too many puns. Matthew Broderick was like, "That's yeah. a lot of fish." <laughs> yeah, it's just bad Stuff writing like that. Like that. It was, wasn't good yeah. writing. And just it was just typical late '90s or, yeah, or yeah. mid '90s when it was made. From what I heard about the new Godzilla, it was kind of underwhelming. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't yeah. wasn't well, really. Say, from what I understand, one of the problems that a lot of reviewers had with the film was is that they wanted more Godzilla. I mean, yeah. we kept mm -hmm. focusing on characters that, like on Brian Cranston's family, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, that was a huge problem with it. And people kept thinking, okay, that's cool and all, but yeah. really, we want a good monster movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, a kai in my opinion, a kaiju movie. Is a is a kaiju. That, it yeah, that a kaiju. was a good monster movie. Yeah, I think that was a good monster movie. Yeah. But, is there anything else? But hey, but other than that, this director hasn't done much. But I'm also a little worried about this because I looked at the screenwriters who I don't have listed, but I can say this: I looked at their work, and a, some of their past works have included like New Moon from Twilight, Ooh. After Earth. Oh no, my God. no, no, I mean, no! It's like brutal I, what these guys have done I'm like you're doing do Star Wars right from now. what I know this movie is supposed to be a little bit grittier than what the other movies have been it's mm -hmm. supposed to show the more militarized side of the rebellion and the Empire not just mm -hmm. the young hero Luke Skywalker on a journey to mm -hmm. no now when you say that now I'm going to be expecting a lot of big action scenes with like yeah. a lot of like. Well, sweet you saw the ATATs and which yeah, is the pretty awesome. Yeah. And that's going to be really cool uh, to see these just rebel foot soldiers go against and like heavy if empire. Darth Vader and, ends up being in it. It's definitely going to be Darth because the legend stuff for Darth Vader and everything, it's terrifying. Darth Vader before A New Hope is. One of the most terrifying characters yeah. in and the Star Wars. We, yeah, universe. and we have a trail. The trailer actually <clears throat> up right now. So, should we go ahead and take a look at that? Yeah, well, so. we're gonna go ahead and play the trailer for you guys, and we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about it while we're watching it. Yeah. So, uh, we're just gonna wait. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we are. I I I, I don't know what I was expecting when I first watched this trailer. I, yeah. I, I was hoping for good things, and mm -hmm. I personally I think I got good things. But then I hear about all this stuff that this director has done. And like, some of the people I like it? seeing mm -hmm. the rebel troops, the old rebel troops walking around, the orange jumpsuits. Yeah. Granted, I, they I, had that still in uh, The Force Awakens with the orange mm -hmm. jumpsuits and everything. Mm -hmm. but. Well, hey, I have to say right now, I think it's a good thing that they're not doing each Force Awakens, like it, the movies uh, uh, sequential to The Force Awakens directly after them yeah. each year, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that means that they're going to be taking the time to produce each next one in the series, yeah. which means they're gonna put good care in it. So no matter how this movie turns out, yeah. I'll tell you, it's a beautiful shot. shot. This, uh, this movie for me, it just feels like a little bit of like, just a little bit more Star Wars before you get more Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little bit of Star Wars. The thing yeah. is, more Star the Wars. Star Wars Rebel season. I've been keeping up with the Rebels recon they do mm -hmm. after every episode of Rebels airs, and they said that Rebels is supposed to be somewhat tying in to 
this movie and leading up to it. Interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now that that shot right there, just a little bit before, that shot is awesome right there. Yeah. But the shot before had had the uh, rebel pilots there's in that. chains. If you yeah. notice that, which is interesting. You know, there's. This is awesome. That is a, I'd say that's a beautiful shot, shot yeah. with the <laughs> elephant walkers, and it's well done too. I have to Some, say. Something and else then I'm there's excited that at the end. Amazing. Something else I'm excited about is that they are not restrained at all when they're making this. No, from, they're, they're restrained. They don't have. They're restrained any, from the, like by the universe. They have to follow the universe's rules. Yeah, but they don't have to follow. Granted, the only thing they but, have yeah. to follow are the movies <laughs> and. Television shows. Yeah, they just have to follow up things leading to it. They don't but because they don't have so much pressure on them right now. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not episode eight. It's it's not. Yeah, th- like, this is like not mm-hmm. saying. Filler. I still <laughs> think it's really important. No, no, though. It's and no. I think I think it, 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 that just means that they they can be more versatile when they're when they're building the universe and all that. And yeah. They can explore different ideas a little bit more freely. They can't. They don't have to go and ask. Who are like the creators? Like, oh, is this gonna work? Is this messed up? Is this going to mess up any the kind of storyline? The only thing that they, they have of... to follow is A New Hope and mm-hmm. the original trilogy. Yeah. No. Okay. So Jeff is like has our background for movies, which is <laughs> awesome. And I just took a peek over here. Some of these guys are no names. These aren't just some no names. These are like. Here we have uh, Forrest Whitaker, Mads Mikkelsen, Alan Tudyk. It's like these are some. I'm Bob not big on actors. Jang Wen. But Alan Mads Tudyk was in like Firefly. And Mads Mikkelsen okay. was the villain in Casino Royale. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker oh. has done stuff like uh, he was recently in The Butler, and also like so, like the main uh, lead actress Felicity Jones was actually nominated for an Academy Award recently for that Stephen Hawking movie, The Theory of Everything. Really? So she's, okay. Yeah, so she So they have a good cast. Some... It's not like what they did with The Force Awakens where they just had a bunch of random nobodies, people. Right. Yeah. But they were good. They were good nobodies. They were good. They're, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they were well done. They did their job well. Yeah. And, man, but just like, th- this is how it, good cast, iffy production team, for me. It's yeah. just like... I don't know. I feel like it can be offset because I have a feeling that anything Star Wars related, they have a certain set of rules. Like they have to put a lot of care into it because the entire future of the franchise can it, it doesn't um, rely on this, but like any kind of future like prequel kind of work. Yeah. So they do have to um, take good care of it. I Let's think see. that uh, I don't think it will be. It might not be amazing, uh, but I guarantee that it'll be at least. Probably above average. As as a fan of no Star Wars, what. I'm not expecting this to be yeah. better than oh, Episode yeah, Seven. Definitely. But if it can at least fulfill the job of giving me a good I feel like Star it's Wars be story, up to par with it. I yeah. do. Mm-hmm. If it can at least give me a good, do a good job of fulfilling a good Star Wars story, yeah, we're good. I'm like, I'm, I'm all. The for one it. thing that yeah. got me about this was like in a new hope in all the other star wars the old trilogy specifically there were aliens and stuff like that in the trailer mm-hmm. there were no aliens you got yeah, a good that, point yeah. right there and i'm kind of confused on that there was a droid in one of the shots yeah she was following the i i'm assuming main character around. yeah so droids no aliens so that that is an yeah. interesting thing yeah yeah no they don't have to they don't have these hardcore restrictions on there uh, on their universe they're building and their storytelling, which, speaking of hardcore, what about the movie Hardcore Henry? Yes. Oh, yeah. Segways. A, yeah. Segways. Good segways. Good segways. segways. That was sweet. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> yeah, Call very... me Segquaid. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh, man. But anyway, I Segquaid right in there. <laughs> but, let, but let's get to the point, guys. Hardcore Henry, it's coming out. Well, I guess tomorrow. I didn't know it, yeah. We're filming this, um, mm-hmm. but when we're filming this, it'll be coming out tomorrow, tomorrow. but... Mm-hmm. It's going to be really. It, it looks like it has a lot of potential, guys. I mean, f- first person viewpoint. Amazing. It was, seems very interesting. And I still funny, don't know how I feel about it. You you don't know how you feel about it. Really. Yeah, I won't this, know how I feel about it until I see it. I, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure this movie was kickstarted. This movie, I'm pretty sure was kickstarted, and he uh, was, yeah. the director did a music video for a band called Biting Elbows. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Biting Elbows. And yeah. that was really what sold me to the idea of Hardcore Henry. Right. And then he also released a scene of Hardcore Henry onto YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it was just like a, a like a five or six minute action scene where they're in an abandoned apartment building. Oh, yeah. And I, I, sh- I think I showed it to you yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. 
awesome. I was blown away. I'm like, mm -hmm. I am ready for this. This reminds me of like the old school '90s FPS shooters <laughs> that that, yeah. that that I play. Yeah. I'm like, I it reminds me oh. more. Hey guys, oh, yeah. oh, here's a trailer. Right oh yeah, now. Oh, trailer. yeah. It sounds That's good. It reminded trailer. me more of uh, his oh, past, like an old Medal of Honor game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. on it. But no, I That's that's cool. Like is this RoboCop or something? Well, Pretty much. well, it's this kind is of, RoboCop. Well, it's an interesting combo of like RoboCop <laughs> and uh, Jason Bourne almost. Because from yeah. what I understand, yeah. you know, he's like he's a super agent and he doesn't his know future what is complicated. He does. I mean, his future is complicated. Really, I mean, he doesn't is, know what is. Is that the same guy who played Murdoch on uh, the newest? Oh, uh, Char uh, Charlotte Copley is in this movie. Okay. Yeah, Charlotte. I, I can't even say his name. Uh, I saw a interview with uh, the director. I forget the director's name is Ilya. Uh, it's like Ilya. Oh, Ilya. Nas or Nash 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 it's, it's Russian, so yeah. forgive us if we can't yeah, pronounce it. Yeah, we probably butchered that name. <laughs> but uh, I saw an interview with him and uh, Charlotte, and they were like, he was like, yeah, Charlotte's the guy I wanted to get because he saw his password with like D9, District 9, yeah, District and, 9 uh, and Elysium. And, uh, Elysium, and it's like, he does a very good role. He does, he's a very good I actor like in sci-fi okay. movies. I just think he's great. I'm really, really excited yeah. to see what where this goes. So I see Le I saw Legolas there in the trailer for a bit. Legolas? So, which makes me glad for Orlando Bloom's return to Is the he series. in it? I, um, I don't think so. Oh, I don't, I don't Bloom, know. I'm going to tell you. So, I'm going to say yes. Oh, uh, I do know the guy <laughs> you talked about right at the beginning. I think it was, of the that was part of that action scene. You can tell, the long haired yeah, yeah. man. Which is, is you if, even if the movie isn't good, you have to give him credit. This is crazy. As far as cinematography it's goes, yeah. it's a very great idea. It's a very cool idea. concept. I did some research into the production, and it was shot almost entirely on a GoPro Hero 3 camera. Really? Yes, so. Yeah, I think they like. I think the camera's hooked up to a mask, is what they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Might have been a uh, GoPro. I think you might have. No, like, a GoPro helmet. Guys, I yeah. think told me that. No, see, this is the interesting thing of, that's going to be about the movie. The main character is going to have to be the supporting cast. Because we we can't see the, the character. Oh, we, yeah, oh, we don't right. see the we character are. except for probably You're not going to see his face. Yeah, you're, 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 you're probably not going to see his face. No, once, not at all. Because we, we are the main character. The, Unless the they show it at like. Maybe like a mirror movie shot movie at the end. Like yeah. 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 But, so maybe you, a mirror you, you guys shot. don't want to know what I Yeah, mean, I know. Because yeah. we are. It's, it's like one of the things that I've heard arguments for like video games are like, for example, like. Are video games an art form exactly? Because they are. some people say yeah, they, like, they are in a way. Yeah, that's right. Some people like uh, I know Roger Ebert, the Chicago Sun Times. He had a lot of problems with the video games, saying that oh, these things will never be as serious. However, there are other filmmakers like John Carpenter who did the thing who would say like, well, I think he's wrong. I I yeah, well, that's not true. Started. I think video games right now are extreme. They're getting really close. To being movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, the further yeah, technology yeah. comes, like the closer they get. Some of the Arkham get. movies from Batman are better than some of the Batmans that have come out recent years. Uh, to yeah. prove that, or like the that, Arkham game, the, the, the that games, video games. Yeah, the Arkham games, like yeah. Arkham no, Knight, no. Arkham Org. I had a great all those games that I played. There were some of my See? favorite games out there. And uh, oh, as far as you know, story goes, there's you can't really say something about that unless you actually played the game, unless you actually have played these kinds of games before. But people will say it anyway. But sorry, continue. Oh no, you're fine. Uh, see the a really good example of video games being very close, like the movie, movie, the movies, movies, or like a very, very good story driven that can give you the experience that a movie can't give you. Mm -hmm. Are the Telltale games? Those are oh, yeah. Telltale games. The, are so we're talking about the amazing. Walking Dead series, which mm -hmm. goes hand in hand with the show. Well, it's a different story, but it's like it, it gives you the same emotion oh, as yeah. the show. Yeah. Because you have to make tough decisions in a very cinematic mm -hmm. way. Um. And there's still some good gameplay elements in them. What was that wait, game? Wait, what, what, what? Um, Life is strange. Oh, oh yeah, that, that, that was a recent game for mm -hmm. girl. Yeah. I watched one of my friends play that, and that was, it was really cool. I haven't played the game itself, but I know that it's pretty much that yeah. exact. And then, and then you have tough, gritty games like The Last of Us, mm -hmm. where uh, it was developed by Naughty Dog Studios, and it's like, it's just like punches you in the gut Wait, in the yeah. first 30 minutes of the game. I'm sorry, we, we've we been talking about this, but we haven't talked about Until Dawn yet. Oh, Until yeah, that's a good Dawn. point. That, Until that's Dawn a point. is, a, per, a, is a perfect point. example of how those games are movie-like. It, sorry, it's, um, it's based on basically old, campy horror movies. 
it's one uh, of those kinds of decision-based games where all these decisions you make will come back to haunt you in the I future. I guess Silent, the Silent Hill games were kind of like that at one point. Yeah, it, but it, yeah. it's like you get that telltale experience of like what what am I going to say and yeah. all that, but it's an actual horror game. There's d- different gameplay elements to it. Yeah. That will mm-hmm. As much as you. I don't care for the newer Call of Duty games and stuff like that, mm. even those games are getting to where they're almost oh, like yeah. movies. Yeah. The cutscenes and everything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, especially Very, uh, with um, Kevin Bacon. I, oh I was God. kidding. His name. I don't, I don't think it Ke- it's Kevin Spacey. Yeah, Kevin, it's Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Spacey they even had one of the guys. Kevin Bacon did. Uh, Kevin Bacon <laughs> didn't do any games. Well, I thought. What is that? Is what? that Footloose? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Footloose. It was Footloose. That was Footloose. Yeah, that's Footloose. Yeah, yeah. But um, what? they had Kevin Kevin Spacey in Black Ops Two. No, I think he was in Ghost. Yeah, no, 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 no. That was Advanced that was Advanced Warfare. Warfare yeah. yeah. Okay. And he was talking about like uh, Doritos and stuff. <laughs> the the re- Dorito <laughs> advertisement was coming yeah. up yeah. on your <laughs> screen while and then, you're playing the game. I know one of the guys from. Uh, oh, oh, um, Black yeah. Ops Three. I can't remember his name. Uh, Sam Worthington was in. Uh, was that Sam Worthington? I have no in, idea. In which one? Special Victims Unit. Um, Black Ops. One of the Black, Black Ops games. Oh, I'm not sure. I know. I know. Wait, who are you talking about? Like the main, the the guy who was in it. Bald head. Yeah, I know who yeah, you're talking about. He was. They had him in the game as one of the your teammate and a protagonist. Like. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking he about. He was in the game. Um, I know he left SVU, but. Um, yeah, that, I know who you're talking about. Yes, SVU, Law and Order SVU, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> dude, there's so many Law and Orders. I, don't I know. know. That's there's why I was like, wasn't sure. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like for me, it's kind of like the the show Survivor. It's like every week there's a new season on. <laughs> it's just like it's just crazy. Yeah. I, oh, so my my parents are really big on Survivor, which is like which is great, but it's just like. <laughs> I, I, I haven't watched Survivor in so long, and then they'll, they'll be like, okay, season finale, yeah. and next week they're like, wow, season, this season 50 is on. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, are you, like, that's crazy. So, you ended up doing some research recently on the internet. Yep. For, for what? What did you end oh, up looking up? But before we get to this, I want everyone's opinion on Hardcore Henry. Oh. Wait, what? Thumbs up or thumbs down? All right. um, I'm going to say thumbs up. Uh, I, I honestly, right now, I'm not too... If the story, whether the story is bad or good, um, I think that the cinematography will definitely it'll be an interesting pick. Okay, you, know, yeah. you can always. Yeah, I'm kind of with Quaid here. I mean, I'm definitely excited to see it, but it I don't know if it'll be is if it'll live up to the expectations. If yeah. it'll be like you're actually so immersed in it that you become part of the mm-hmm. story, or if it's going to be so disorienting that you your, your mind That's, will just be like, Whoa. yeah. I think you it's one of those ahead, movies where it can't go horribly wrong, but it can kind of go wrong. So it's just like a like a like a middle. Like I, a middle? I, I, give it, I, I give it a thumbs up. Mi- middle, I, thumbs up, middle. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I give it a middle. Okay, thumbs up. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up because of what I've seen of the director and his what he's done. So and I'm excited to see it, and I can respect what what this risk he's taking, and I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm gonna have to be where Jeff's at. Middle, middle. Okay. middle. Just because I, I can see where it's coming from. Yeah. I'm afraid the that it's just going to be too yeah. much oh, for up, me middle, up, middle. Okay. while I'm watching it. I like the first-person view. I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think it's an awesome way to shoot a movie. Mm-hmm. But I'm just... Okay, yeah, I can respect that. All right. Okay, now back to what Jacob was saying. I'm sorry, <laughs> I interrupted you. No, you're fine. Uh, okay, so I have been doing some research. I've decided that every week I'm going to kind of bring to the table some a couple weird news stories i found. So <laughs> the first one is a little creepy. Uh, we have a picture in the back of the show whenever I'm, I'm explaining it. So this happened Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, a new laughing doll was put on Craigslist by a, by a Craigslist user. That's terrifying. By a Craigslist user in Oklahoma City. And basically, the, they put the price, the price of the doll is $1. They, like they said, you guys can have this Ooh. for a dollar. And the best, deal. the best thing for me is, it, is the uh, ad they put at the bottom in the description. <laughs> Is and it reads like this: Our daughter doesn't want it anymore. Our dog won't stop barking at it, and we never find out where we leave it. The doll doll has really cute laugh, no batteries. That's that's the whole description. Oh gosh. And so, wait, so so it has. I'm just confused right now. This it's, is, it's it's just 
I don't know if it's some so kind is of this prank. like an ongoing thing that just happens on Craigslist? No. Or this is it's interesting that you ask that because I did a little bit more digging. I regret regretfully I did a little bit more digging about about the subject. Dark web. And it's <laughs> haunted items like haunted dolls in general are huge all over eBay. Like oh, if you just type in haunted doll on eBay, you'll have like a hundred pages come up. Obviously, of different some haunted of them dolls have to be fake though. Yeah, yeah but some of them I'm not sure. eBay is a pretty shady place now. Most of most of them are labeled uh, like highly active negative energy or like something like that. Oh yeah, just and, a little bit of negative energy coming from this yeah. doll. <laughs> and and they all will uh, every single one of them has some kind of weird and crazy backstory. Like this one I read, this woman died and her room was full of dolls, and this doll that they were selling was right next to her bed who helped her pass on. That, wait, that's wait, like, that's wait, like wait. So, from. so you're saying like the doll was like holding her hand and saying like it's okay, you've lived a good life. Basically, <laughs> oh it's my, just like oh my people say that, and it's, it's just it's just I don't. And the people who post it will have descriptions of themselves as being like Wiccans or like they'll be paranormal collectors, which is which is interesting. Paranormal collectors are interesting, mm -hmm. interesting thing to get into. I'm a little iffy on the paranormal stuff. I am too, but I just thought this was so crazy because this is a part of the internet. I've never like been involved in before. <laughs> I'm just like at least it's Whoa. not as bad as like 4chan or. <laughs> well, we don't want to offend any of our 4chan <laughs> fans. <laughs> but no, it's just this stuff is just. We live in a creepy world, man. I don't know. It's I, it's just. Oh man, I forgot about this. It's you don't have to you don't have to believe in it, but there's always I think every almost everybody has a certain like you, guys, you don't believe it, but you'll get creeped out every now and then by things gone, like this. Have you guys ever gone ghost hunting or anything like that? No. Ghost no. hunting? Um, well, I I don't know about that, but I do remember like where I came from. Like I knew this one story. I can't remember all the details about it, but I remember that there was this house uh, out out in the country somewhere where I'm from. And a friend of ours who, who's an auctioneer for ground and houses and things like that, he was, uh, he was talking about this property. And the person who had lived in it before had come up to him and said, like, okay, something about this place is up. You do not want to mess with it. And he was like, <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. But he kept really? going. But he decided he went ahead and go in there. But as soon as he went in, it was just like cold chill just went Ugh. up i mean he it was so weird i mean i have I, a lot of friends in robinson like while we were in high school and stuff they used to go ghost hunting all the time and we have like a ghost hunting like community like club thing in robinson <laughs> where people get together and like bring whatever those weird devices are and like uh, go to you, you mean that houses. houses. The, the, yeah. Detect ectoplasm uh, and all that thing. Yeah. I wanna, uh, yeah maybe, not maybe, maybe. not ectoplasm, it's like, but like <laughs> it's like yeah. Sound, sound like the presence and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, and Ugh. they used to go I don't know if you guys know where Casey is. It's up north, kinda near Marshall, Illinois. Oh I don't know. But there's this church called Restitution Church and what used to go on down there after it got abandoned was people used to go up there and like worship the devil and stuff like that. And apparently there's been some weird stuff that's happened at this church, but... Oh my god. Yeah, yeah worshipping the devil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little weird, but... I'll say it's a uh, little strange. I mean, we're talking about haunted dolls right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because that's fits. dolls. Yeah. And uh, the, the prices for these things are pretty high. Uh, basically, it was like... Um, the highest one I saw was five thousand dollars. A doll, the doll went for five thousand dollars, <laughs> and uh, the lowest one I found was like a dollar. Yeah, that one. That's the lowest Ooh. one I found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like and this doll. This is, make what, this is as soon you, as you possible. Can, you can totally ruin your family's lives by buying this for a <laughs> yeah, dollar. Maybe. Uh, well, the average price for them is about. I think like sixty to one hundred dollars usually. Maybe you can always buy it and put it in someone mail someone's like mailbox or something. That's just weird. <laughs> you mean yeah. just, I wouldn't even okay. buy it in the first place. Wow, I'd say that's true. just touching it just seems wrong to me. Okay, so the the next thing I researched, the next weird thing that uh, that I saw. You know what? Let me stop you there. because <laughs> uh, I have one more thing. I have a quick thing to say. Okay. We're gonna take a quick break. Uh, I think that after we get back, we might have a special guest on right here, and we will continue with your story. Okay. So. All right. Well, we'll be Sounds right back good. after this, guys. 
I didn't want to go to community college because it was too small, too limiting. I wanted a place where I could expand my horizons and gain experiences for a strong future. Where I could meet people from other places and learn about them. A college choice that meant a strong start, not huge debt. Where I would have the support I needed. Where teachers knew my name and worked with me on a personal level. And people were ready and available to help me plan my future. That's why I choose my community college! Yeah! 89.1 The Bash is guaranteed to bring you the latest in today's hit alternative. Including the classics. 24-7 non-stop. With 50,000 watts of power, turn those radio dials to 89.1 The Bash for all your music needs. I didn't want to go to community college because it was too small, too limiting. I wanted a place where I could expand my horizons and gain experiences for a strong future. Where I could meet people from other places and learn about them. A college choice that meant a strong start, not huge debt. Where I would have the support I needed. Where teachers knew my name and worked with me on a personal level. And people were ready and available to help me plan my future. That's why I choose my community college! Welcome back, everybody, and <laughs> we have a special guest. This is our producer, Hayden. He's going to be on. Uh, he's on with us right now. He's going to talk to us. I've been running the camera for the first half of this. Yeah, he's, he's going to be talking here. with us about uh, music. But first, I just have to get through my other story. Just one. One real quick one. This happened on March 25th. It's a little old. Uh, but a man was arrested for an overdue VHS rental from 2002. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? Wait, so, how do you get arrested for something that's happened so, like, 14 this, this, okay, years yeah, ago? 14 years. This, this is a discussion I want to have because sh when is the cutoff date for a movie rental place? Okay, first of all, the business went, was, is no more. The business is, is so, gone. Yeah. So, how the, did they okay. that? so the business is out of business. Yes, and he okay. still got arrested for not returning the rental. Well, I think, How does that happen? I, I, mean, yeah. I think the most that the guy could do, really, is like maybe pay a small fee, like, hey, what was the price for the movie back in the day? And yeah. Like, paying that, that I way would be reasonable. You gotta think, though, if they have like a late fee charge, and like all that time is mm -hmm. built up for a late fee charge, yeah. so it could be a pretty significant amount of money if you had to pay like Yeah, like, but with like libraries and stuff like that, when you're a little kid, your library doesn't arrest your parents for you losing a book it just kind of like you just pay for yeah. it and well, how do you like, know <laughs> i mean i mean <laughs> librarians crack down yeah, child, so. today, like. yeah. okay wait wait <laughs> so you guys have to guess what you you can't i've already told you what i've already told you two what the movie was but you guys have to guess what the movie he rented what was. The movie was though so, so it was from 2002 <laughs> right? it was from 2002 it was released that year Okay, it was okay. released that year. Um, it was a comedy. Okay, uh, never mind. Man, I'm trying to think what com I keep wanting to say Bad Santa, but I know that's not right. So, uh, what, do you, what do you think it was? Uh, Matrix. <laughs> the, the, the comedy? The second Matrix. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Okay, <laughs> what do you think it was? Uh, I have no idea. I honestly don't, because I can't think of anything that okay. came out that year. What was it? It was Freddy Got Fingered. Oh. He rented Freddy Got Fingered. I've never even I've heard never, of that movie. I've never heard of it either. Okay, it's a I, bad movie. The, way, the way I'm thinking of it doesn't really sound like a PG-13 movie. Uh, well, the thing, okay, so he rented or that movie, movie. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. what, 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 what he's being we charged with, videos. what he's uh, being charged with is a misdemeanor crime failing to return rental property. It was Freddy. Fred, Freddy's the one who, who called the cops on him. <laughs> no. It's been 14 <laughs> years. <laughs> <Freddy's>. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the main actor in it, uh, I think his name's John, Tom Green. I think it's Tom Green. Tom Green. Okay, I know you're talking about Tom Green. And he, uh, he's, helping out, he's helping the guy with legal fees, which is pretty cool. Oh, that is wow. Cool. Yeah, cool. He, he feels really bad for the guy. I mean, so he's, he's helping yeah. with legal fees. I mean, it's been 14 years. <laughs> I mean, 14 <laughs> years. I mean, you can let go of this stuff, I, th I would think. And the place is out of business. I mean, come on. They're probably it's looking like, for a quick buck or something. Was it a blockbuster? No, it was called. It was called. The, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a. It was like a local. Okay. Okay. Shop. okay right. that's, that's even weirder. Too. Yeah. 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 This is some local like mom and pop shop. Yeah. So. Blockbuster jokes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the reason why Hayden's on here is because he's big in music, and so is Jacob. A little bit. I'm not. I, I like music a lot, but I'm not really like a very. Uh, You're not a connoisseur. Fluent in yeah. the music terms and languages, so that's why we have uh, Hayden on here to help us out. And uh, take it away, Jacob. 
for something well, to talk about. First thing we want to talk about um, came out a few weeks ago is OK Go's new music video. Ooh. OK Go has come out with some of the coolest music videos that I've ever seen. The coolest. Green Not screens, Rupi Goldberg machines. Mm. Treadmills. Um, yeah, here Treadmills. Treadmills. That, that was yeah. my. That was my Treadmills yeah. Treadmills is probably the, the most popular yeah, one. Play the video. But uh, this one we're gonna show you is they ended up going into a zero gravity plane and shooting uh, a oh, oh, one shot is. video. This, this we have actually we actually have it right here. It's pretty yeah. sweet. Check and it out. just just I have so much respect for these guys because. How long did it take them yeah, dude. to get this, this down? Is, this, this is crazy. This, I've watched this before, and this is like a all in one take, which is insane. That is Most insane. of their videos, it's yeah, all, all one shot one with yeah, right, right. a camera. I'd say, uh, the, the couple of videos I've seen of them, I, I, I believe there was one with, where it was all dogs, if I remember right. I don't know if I remember that one, but... But I know that it was done in one shot, and I'm pretty sure it was okay. Go if I'm wrong, please correct me. They've even done one where they had like a band in some ghillie suits and stuff like that, and they popped up every now and then as they marched through this field mm -hmm. and just follow them, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, um, I'm walking the team. This this this, <laughs> this this song that this music video is for is actually a really really good song. Too. Yeah, and, I agree. And it reminds me a lot of uh, White Knuckles, the, that song they they came out with a while back ago. It's very similar in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, favorite OK Go music video, Hayden? What is it? I'm not sure, man. Like, this one is so amazing, it might be my top. <laughs> this one's my top, I'll tell you that. This is awesome. I like the Ruby Goldberg machine one. The Whoopi Goldberg? The, yeah. The Whoopi Goldberg what you, machine. What do you think, Quaid? The, Ru the Rube Goldberg. Ru Rube Goldberg? Oh, I thought, oh you said, I thought you said Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, was I don't talking. actually know the name, I just know it's Goldberg at okay. the end, so. <laughs> All right. Whoopi cool Goldberg running. Machine. Whoopi That'd Goldberg. Be cool <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be quite the music video. <laughs> I mean, this thing is just like the choreography is just like insane. I mean, the flight I, attendants are really cool to watch too. I they mean, at one point they grab ankles and just kind of spin around in a circle. Whoa, spoiler! Well, that's awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that, <laughs> sorry. That must take so much but effort to, to go to try this. and get some company to agree to shoot a music video in this. I, I'm guessing super expensive. Oh yeah. Jet. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, I mean, how do you you find the time and? Then, and I mean, like they, yeah. they they start popping the uh, like balloons with paint in them. Yeah. On this jet. Completely and, ruining yeah. it. Yeah, just destroying it. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, pretty. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, the the probably one of the coolest parts is when the flight attendants like they start like they grab like they grab ankles like yeah. you said mm -hmm. and they spin. It's just it's oh, yeah. like it's just crazy. That's, that is insane. How many times they mess just that one part up and the they have to restart? Yeah. They yeah, collect yeah, yeah. all the balls. They have to scrub all the paint off the side. Like I mean, if they mess up once. I mean that's just the thing. That's one of the things I admire about the in this video in particular and the other videos that I've seen of them is that it's just it's just. I mean, I, I can't even articulate what it means to me you know, to see these kind of videos because a lot of videos we see nowadays... They're I think, one of the few people that yeah, do these. They put a lot of effort into them. And what I think is that they're going to have to keep going bigger and better until... You, one of them... I swear, in the, the next three music this, videos, they're going to the moon. The one before the this, the, they ended the up having, getting a hold of this Japanese company and they have like these little scooter things that you sit on. Mm -hmm. And they shot it all with a drone. And they had at least 400, 500 people in one video. They had, they were on these scooters and they had umbrellas. So from the aerial view of the drone, it looked like one of those marquee signs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Man, it was so awesome. inventive. Man. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's it. I mean, what I was trying to articulate a minute ago is that, you know, a lot of music videos are the same ideas rehashed over and over again. So I'm always looking for a new approach to things. They've always right, done something right. new. But like, I have this other band I want to talk about. And speaking of like artistic music videos and stuff, this band is Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros. They ha they produce a song called Home, and yeah, a lot of people know that. I know you guys know, but J Jacob is uh, 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 home is with you. Yeah, yeah, that's oh yeah, that, that that will clear it up for me. Yeah, a very focused song. Oh. Or focused song. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah. It was really popular for a while. Cool. Um, but they they are working on a new album right now. It's that's called, awesome. It's called Person A. A Person A, you say it's called? Yeah, Person A, and it dropped three days ago, so the fourth. 
of this month, and uh, they, they came out with this like <laughs> this, this song. It's like uh, I don't remember the, the title of the song, and I don't want to say it be wrong, so I'm just gonna say there's a, this new song. But they they dropped this music video for it, and it's like super artistic, really well done, and everything. So even my dad has heard of. Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros, which I thought was weird. I have. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Oh, I, was I, I, I kind of feel like, like wait, his <laughs> yeah. dad heard of it, then I'm out of touch with the times or something. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Yeah, but My hopefully after stuff. this new album, you all have heard of them and know who they are. I'm, sure, are I'm amazing, sure I've heard of them, amazing. but I've sure, I'm sure I've heard their music, I just didn't know their name. They're kind of folkish, and that like lead, that like leads into what I want to talk about next is the Lumineers. Mm. They just dropped a single called Ophelia. Mm. We actually play it right here on the Bash. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah, I remember. It's a really good song. I don't think um, I've even listened to it yet. They haven't made any music in like over six years, and they're working on this new album right now. They dropped that single. It's going to be a hit. We already played, like I said, mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing. And they are uh, set to drop their newest album. It's called uh, Cleopatra, Cleopatra, and it's going to drop Cleopatra. April eighth. Cool. Which is, what is that, tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Holy yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. That was good we, timing. We, hey, guys, if you ever really want to send timing. a guy a new album to check out, then there you go. Check Cleopatra out, from the Lumineers. Wait, so wait. So the single's called Ophelia, and the album's called Cleopatra. Yeah. Is every single song named after some kind of different... Like, uh, I'm not sure about that. That would be really question, cool. Though. That'd be so, really Jake, cool. let me... It could you be haven't like, heard Ophelia yet? No. It's good. Well, even my dad's heard Ophelia. Well, okay. All right. But no, that would be in an interesting concept. I mean, I remember, I, I can't remember the name of the musician, but I remember I was looking through Pitchfork Media, which is this uh, music outlet out of Chicago. Yeah. Okay. And what they they did is they were naming some of the best albums of, the, of each year from like 2000 on. And one of the albums was by this one guy who did an entire album based on the concept of Illinois and it's like mythology like that's kind of okay, cool. cool like Kashmir Kashmir Pulaski and I can't remember what it's called but the album I believe is called Illinois with an Insane. E for some reason so <laughs> okay. so it's like a concept album but it's talking about all these historical events like I said Kashmir Pulaski the that's maybe cool. the great fire in Chicago right and, Things like that. I can't remember all of the songs or the events that it talks about, but I was reading about it. If Lumineers did something like that, that would be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That would be so cool. A lot, of, a lot of their music's have to do with like, like flapper girls, like the 40s, 30s, stuff like that. In yeah. my opinion, like they talk about like a like a uh, a guy, a kid who plays drums in like the war. It's like it's called drummer boy. Then there's oh, a flapper okay. girl. Then like they talk about stuff like that, like like old time think, stuff, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I like opinion. bands that do that kind of stuff are really awesome. Mm -hmm. I'd say they're very interesting. Bands that can tell a story. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 And that's why I really like folk music. Yeah, because that's because a lot of what it's about. It's mostly stories. And that's what it is. It's uh, like story time with music, and it's amazing. I'd yeah. say story time with music. That's great. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's, that's story a great time. concept. That, that's a great way to put your kids to sleep yeah. when, you know, when they're little. It's just like... Put them on, put on some Lumineers. <laughs> <and> Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is Bob Dylan is great, but no, that's the one thing about folk music is that it's so... It has a connection to people, I think, that a lot of music doesn't. It's because... Well, sometimes you can relate to the story. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, or you just... That's what's great about music. Yeah. That's the thing yeah. about music. It just brings people together, like all of us here. I mean, we all come from different backgrounds, but even though we all are different in some way, we all share this love for music and whatever that it is that brings us together. I hate music. Yeah, yeah. dude, I was going to say, wait, you know, us in the man. fields, Jeff. Yeah. Came, oh, came, God. From, came from the heart, man. Uh, oh, my God, I was going to make, like... <laughs> I can't top that. That was what I was saying. We should just end it here. Uh, yeah, so mu music is good. <laughs> Everybody uh, should listen to music. What I was going to say is Especially something I really board. appreciate out folk music a reason why I like it. I've really started listening more recently, and oh, I'm good. like, man, good folk music you. is great. And it's a lot, it's very different from other genres, right. and because a lot of genres, even alternative, is a lot of the songs are very samey. Well, like, with folk, you're not restricted. Like, yeah. you can you can change, because you're telling a story, so you do have whichever a, means effectively tells that story, you can go and do that. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is a good point, because that's something like what Hayden was mentioning with Bob Dylan is something that he would do a lot of times, mm -hmm. is Bob would take these old folk songs, like in his first album, and right. he changed the words around, therefore changing the entire meaning yeah. of the song. Right. Or maybe taking a simple melody, 
uh, on a guitar or whatever it is from a record, an old 78 he may have heard from, I don't know, 1920s maybe, and then made something totally new out of it. Okay, Bob Dylan is a genius and a yeah. legend. That's what he's <laughs> I mean, opinion. that goes with that song. That song's my favorite. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this album is going to entail and yeah. what the future of the We're probably going to have be. more of their music when the album comes out. Fun fact oh, yeah. about the Lumineers. I mean, station. we already have a lot of Lumineers on our playlist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, there's this one song that came on, and I was trying to think of, like, fun facts to, uh, to like, when I was on doing my air shift, I was thinking of, like, fun facts to go with the song. I looked it up. turns out that Barack Obama himself had Stubborn Love by the Lumineers on his Spotify playlist and he listens to that song. <laughs> wow. And I thought that was awesome. So whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Can I access Obama's Spotify playlist? Because you can access other people's playlists. No, no, no. Secret Spotify. Service will come and kill you if you try to listen to oh. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay. Didn't you know that? Uh. Oh my god, I want to see what's on his playlist now. That's so <laughs> interesting. I, I've actually heard it. It was like some Beyonce and. Yeah, Beyonce, Jay Z. Jay -Z. And it was Jay Z too, yeah. Did you, what you know is this? Was? Beyonce, Jay Z, I mean, it's just. It's nuts. I mean, the guy is just like. What? <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, you picture like maybe like someone like, I don't know, maybe. George W. Bush, he may listen to like, uh, I don't know, George Strait. George Strait, yeah, George yeah. W. Bush yeah. would listen to George Strait well, for sure. He's a Texas boy, but oh, yeah. Obama. I guarantee he listened to Smash Mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you think, probably he, was, true. You think he listens to Smash Mouth. That uh, would be interesting. Uh, back, back to Jay-Z, have you guys ever, have you guys been hearing about the catastrophe that's title? Oh, yeah, it's this so, music. You, you want to explain what it is? Well, go ahead and fill me in. Details. Okay, so title is a. Uh, I've been kind of following this, uh, like title. kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of detailed, like, but uh, it's it's a streaming service like Spotify or oh, iTunes. Oh, Jack Music. White okay. and Kanye West it's, are part of it. Yes, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. about. Jack White and Kanye West and Jay Z are a part of something, then that's going to change it's, the it's, world. It's, it's also Daft Punk. <laughs> it's also Daft Punk, and yeah. Dead the Mouse, EDM and world. Madonna, and uh, I think Nicki Minaj is part of this. I don't really there's, a bu there's a bunch of like, I mean, really big artists, Kanye. but it's it's, yeah. it's so funny because... I don't know if you can sit by me anymore. <laughs> it's so funny because <laughs> okay, title is a serious film. Let's hear what Hunter has It's just like, there's all these huge artists that are involved in this. It's really funny because title's a failure. Like it's it's try, it can't be Spotify probably because at all. it's spot and it, there's already Spotify and Pandora right yeah. and you have to pay I think a pay, I, if like I'm right a pay like a twenty dollar fee every month or yeah it, it's it's, oh. it's I, I mean for, I, I remember yeah. when it's uh, way too much like I mean kind of lean on to the Kanye West thing whenever he dropped uh, his new uh, album oh yeah. yeah yeah he was like everybody was so hyped and he was like going on Twitter he was saying like the best hey, album oh, ever, yeah ever best album ever and he's like hey guys um. I was thinking about something, and uh, I'm thinking about not putting CDs out anymore. Yeah, he, yeah. he just but put it on is, Tidal, and it was released on Google Play um, like a few weeks later. I would rather still have CDs and records yeah, to be that, able to that's buy. Just me. For some yeah, reason, there's a have the material thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's a material Maybe thing. I mean, I have a sorry. I have a sort of message for Kanye West. Um, <laughs> Kanye. Uh, was it fifty million dollars? I don't think Zuckerberg is going to give you that money, man. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sad to say. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, we're sorry, dude. I got, I got like two bucks in my wallet. If you want it, though, I mean, I'll support you that Wasn't way. Wasn't that in quarters too? <laughs> <laughs> there were some pennies in there. Uh, yeah. Just, just to kind of give you a little idea of the title, they're suing their old, their, uh, they're suing the old owners of title because they thought that they. Uh, lied about the subscribers to them so they could get more money out of oh, yeah. Jay Z buying it, uh -huh. and they also lie about their subscribers. They also include the f the free trial people, so mm -hmm. to to seem better. So seem titles nice. kind of like I'd say title. Uh, I mean, I don't mind experiments in music. I mean, sonically, but still distribution is just. I think there are very set rules. People actually want their music, and they don't want to have to pay a whole lot for it. Right, I feel right, like right. Pandora, I, Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube already have that covered. Yeah, I don't think they need another. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I just they want to bring back Livewire. Then <laughs> oh, Livewire. <laughs> Livewire yeah. was indie though. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that like virus-ridden? Yeah. yeah. Virus-ridden no. and no one piracy. But, oh, hey, I mean, God. free music, man. 
I swear, swear <laughs> every song I downloaded came with this, like, it was like this uh, ad for some weird website. It was this Bill Clinton ad <laughs> where he's just like, my fellow Americans, I did not have se uh, sexual relations with that woman. I did, however, go to ivfreeclub.com <laughs> to get um, All right. free t-shirts and so, free CDs. <laughs> oh, we got about it was horrible. 10 minutes left in this, and last thing, just kind of want to hit a little bit, Dark Souls. Oh yeah, Dark Souls 3 is dropping next week. Tuesday, April 12th. Oh yeah. Go get it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, go get it. Have you guys played Dark Souls at all? I have, uh, I have played fan. Bloodborne, and I have played other Dark Souls. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I have a good relationship with it, but I'm not a, What's a hardcore your, fan. Is that just your overall opinion for that then? No, I think it's good. I think it's a very good series in that it's something that everyone should try out at one point. I agree. No uh, matter how hard they are. I haven't played it, but yeah, I was about to say, like, I hear people say it's, like, very, like, Do you have a PlayStation 4 or I Xbox One? Are they, they releasing PS3. it for Xbox One? Mm, yeah. Or are they doing a Bloodborne thing where they no, only release like, it for PS4? It, it's not, it's not, uh, it'll exclusive. be on everything, yeah. Yeah, it'll be on everything. But That's good. I, I, I don't know, it's... Something about it's a very dark kind of game. Wow, it is it's dark. a very uh, it is dark gothic. Dark Souls, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's, it's the gothic kind of look is. I'm more of a kind of like bright particles and it, stuff uh, like that. Like, oh, well, it's gotta be bright. <laughs> something I really respect about it, about something I really respect about it. Man, I can't talk. Uh, a lot of games nowadays like to hold your hand. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah Dark yeah, Souls yeah, definitely. does not hold your hand I at all. Agree. It's just like a lot of games like to hold your hand right now. Even yeah. games like. Fallout and Skyrim and stuff like that. They like to just kind of push you a yeah. little bit. Dark, Dark, Dark Souls, really you're like... just kind of like, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have a set list you're saying, because, uh, forgive me, I'm not much of a game. Oh, no, that's fine. Go ahead. But no, it's uh, what you're saying, like, it doesn't have, like, a set uh, yeah, so because most, game, most games is it will lead you. Or, yeah, it's an RPG. So and it basically, has a story. This, this is the, I'm just going to say the whole premise of Dark Souls. You, you, there's a boss somewhere. You die. Find it, kill it. That's uh, it. That's you it. die along the way. Wait, and hold on. And you probably die along the way. And you'll die along the way. So you can times. do it any way that you Maybe want more. to. Well, okay. So there's there's right. different areas you can go through, and there's like there's a boss in every area, and you just have to mm. find the boss. And but the the thing is, the way you level up in the game is that you you kill monsters and you get like. Uh, they mm -hmm. call it souls. It was like a stack up over time. Mm -hmm. But if you die, and that's the only way you can level up, or you can buy stuff in yeah. the game. Okay. So if you die, but if you die, you lose all of them. Oh. It, it's the kind of game that tells you the basic controls, and then it just sets you off. It's yeah. like you oh, know, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Hold, it doesn't take you along. Oh, I, get, I understand you, what you're oh, meaning. Oh, this like, is this boss is this. You uh, make sure that you press the the B button to dodge at this time. Yeah, I, it's I, just I like, got what you're saying. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it shows you what <laughs> yeah. dodging is. It's like when you throw the boss at you, it kills you. It's like oh, it's, welcome to the dark side. It's, yeah. like, it's <laughs> like you're warned. So basically, it's like you're warned once and then you're yes, just you're pretty much you're pretty much set yeah. loose. Except uh, so other players can leave like messages to you, and they can either tell, be helpful or they just be completely to mess you up. Yeah. So yeah. it's like. You can't really trust anything. Yeah, so what makes this Dark Souls so special right now? Or well, makes it so special is because just the that fan it's just that it's a new. Just the fan, yeah, base it's huge. fan base, the graphics from what I've seen are fantastic compared very, to the first and second. Very reminiscent to Dark uh, to Dark Bloodborne, Bloodborne from yeah, yeah. Okay. they are. Um, yeah, IGN did some stuff where they I've been kind of avoiding everything because it got released for, which is pretty stupid, but it got released for reviewers, and there have been sneaky ways. There's just been just been things because really, it, yeah, and like two weeks ago, so there's been a lot of like cover coverage on it out right now, but I've been kind of avoiding all of it because yeah. I want to be like, yeah, don't tell me anything. <laughs> but that's the whole point of Dark Souls. Yeah. You're not supposed to know anything. <laughs> and uh, Quaid, were you going to say? Oh, something? I was going to oh, say you can buy it in Japan. Basically, that's that's what the yeah, whole deal is. Yeah. People are buying it from Japan because that's where uh, it was made originally, and then they're just having it. Uh, they're buying it on the online store there, and they're just downloading it and playing the uh, Japanese copy before American people will play it. So they're just and taking advantage. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and YouTube. So that's it's, all I really had to say uh, about it, though. That be, is that all we got about? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. that's I think yeah. it's about it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's about. It's uh, well, I was just informed we have about okay. six minutes left, right. so let's find wait, something. Wait, wait. I want to like talk about. Anyone the bash has been thunderstruck. 
Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Uh, yeah. That was amazing. Our thunder was hit by a lightning last night. All day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's just static if you tune into A91 The Bash. But we do have a app, and mm-hmm. you can listen to us there. Now, and our, on the internet. Or the internet on our website. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, bashradio.com. It's not yeah. up there. No, it's bashradio.com. About to say, you can't, you or can't miss it. 89 won the bash on the App Store and the Google Play Store right. if you want to find and it. And also, there. since yeah. we're putting plugs in for our own station, mm-hmm. we also have an Instagram and yeah. a Twitter and a Facebook too. We, we, wait, do we have two? Is it just one Twitter? Do we have the addresses? Just one Twitter. We okay. just have the one We have one. a Twitter. Mm-hmm. So we we'll have check them out. We are check them out. All right. Oh, oh, and there's an event going on here at the, at the college on the 28th of April this month. From 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., there's going to be bands from Kentucky, Evansville, Indiana, and also Vincent's Indiana, and there's still other bands. Battle to be, the bands. To be um, announced. Here, hit me that real quick. It is a battle of bands, and it's going to be great. How many, how many bands do we have currently set up? Currently, we have six competing bands, but yes, this is a great time to also put another plug in for something else I need. Oh man, um, I'm also looking everything. for people to <laughs> to play in between sets, uh, in between the competing beds, competing band sets. Um, I think it will be an acoustic mic setup, so like an open mic. But I also want we also need bands to play too. So go to Facebook page also. You can go and like Sunfest Mixdown at Facebook.com. Is that how yeah, it yeah. is? Yeah, yeah. Right. And there's an event, and go ahead and push going because I know you're going to be wanting to go. There, so just go ahead and push <laughs> oh, going. Oh man! Well. Bands that are going to be going there. First prize gets four hundred dollars for a prize. Uh, second, two hundred. Third. 100. 100. And all bands get radio spots, so you'll get to hear them on 89 One The Bash as well later on. I have a question. Are these bands any good? Of course not. I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. They're the one who got most. They're good bands. I tried. I was just kidding. These bands are great. I'm sure these bands are wonderful. But can we. Sorry, continue. I'll, I'll, I'll get to my point in a second. Oh, God. You can go to your point right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, real important news. Um, my grandma's birthday party is next week. Uh, all <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are invited. Are you out invited? there, you know who it is. No, you guys suck. What? Is, <laughs> um, what? No, you're invited. Like Come by. Have cream. a good time. There's going to be ice there's gonna be cream, ice cream uh, vanilla, nice. chocolate, some... Wait, what? Uh, there's gonna be some punch. You better not be lying about this. I would never lie in a million oh, years. Oh, we caught him. He's lying. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you all at his uh, grandma's birthday party. Yeah. Okay, here. But, the thing is, this is my birthday party. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But anyway, so um, the music overall. What, is it like a? What is the feel for? Is it more it like heavy metal? A, no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, I was afraid like uh, the heavy, the heavy we got metal and death metal. metal. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy metal and death metal <laughs> has kind of like gone its way, and like the new generation kind of listens to more. Tell them the truth. You know, I'm, I not, I'm not trying to dog on people that listen to heavy metal because I, I listen to some heavy stuff too. Like not I, I enjoy some Motorhead, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but, Wait, but I'm but I'm saying like. Didn't no, Merle Haggard. Yeah, Haggard. He passed away when, uh, kind of when David Bowie passed away, so nobody really heard about Rest it. Rest in peace, Merle, Merle Haggard. Yeah, but, Merle Haggard. Wait, 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 I'm talking about the lead singer of Motorhead, but uh, the country singer just, uh, Merle Haggard. Merle Haggard. Died. But, but, oh, but no, oh God, God, I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> not, that's not the <laughs> same thing. Shot. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> I'm that's sorry. Bad, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but the bands that are gonna be here, like they're alternative <laughs> rock. One band's a little punkish. And they're just good. They're, one's a folk rock. That's kind of band. what I'm excited for. They're all good. It's a good rock. genre mixed together, and you'll you'll enjoy it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so okay. So wait. So one last thing before we do before we do before we go, I want us all to recommend something. Either be a, a movie or music. Okay. Hey, you go. I already recommended those folk bands, and but I'll recommend the movie for you guys. Nightcrawler. Go oh, check that out. It's an yeah, amazing movie. Good. To Jacob. Uh, this is a tough question right now. Um, music wise, one of my favorite bands, Fall of Troy, out of Seattle, is coming out with a new album within the next few days, 10, 10 days. They released a single not too long ago. You should check it out, 401k. That's about it. It's pretty good. 401k. 401k, 401K is the name that's of the name song. Uh, I'm going to recommend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to recommend the. Uh, I love you. The uh, <laughs> I'm gonna recommend the original, the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So go watch that; it's amazing. What about you, Jeff? 
Oh, man. Well, music-wise, uh, I'm sorry. I just can't take it. Uh, keep going. Just keep right, going. But, but as far as music, uh, what I've been listening to lately, um, well, yeah, classic, classic R.E.M. has really been filling in with me, especially their Automatic for the People album, because something about the music is just so... I don't know how to say it. It's so... It's just beautiful stuff, and if you really enjoy it, hey, R.E.M., just... Or just like some of your favorite bands, like alternative <laughs> rock in general, then voila. There you All go. right. I think that's it yeah. for us. These two are All being right. difficult. We've so. lost control. It's me, Simon Cowles. <laughs> All right. Spirit. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the Bashcast. I'm Jacob. I'm Hunter. I'm Jeff. It's me, Simon Cowell. And I'm executive producer, Eric Crazy Crane. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. That was a dreadful podcast.